All right, we are at it again, ladies and gentlemen. We've done it. They are here. The pre mades for the Shade of Dominion are finally here. And without any further ado, we have the Corruption Mage, Nocto the Dementor. Now, Nocto was a project that I fell in love with because this was when it, th this was something that I had already, uh, this is something that's going to be part of the expansion. Uh, the Dementors are a faction that are that are a combination of two different um, attributes. Um, but Nocto here is going to be their poster child. He's going to be their template. And so we're just going to go through Nocto to give you an idea of what the Dementors are all about and how Nocto has embraced their virtues. Nocto is an ambitious occultist. He, and that ambition really is what drives his entire his entire essence. He is a nightmare summoner. He is someone who goes into the mind of his victims, pulls out what terrifies them the most, and brings it onto the battlefield, assaults them with mind spells, debilitates them, incapacitates them, and then feeds off of that fear. And he is, above all else, an acolyte of the void. His background, <clears throat> Nocto, is a recent addition to the Dementors a reclusive group seeking to undermine and overthrow Soyros. Nocto, now for those of you who don't know, Soyros is the, uh, the, um, what is his name? Yogmoth. He's the, the, the Yogmoth of the, um, Shades of Dominion. Uh, so, Nocto recently came into contact with a new wellspring of the Shade called the Abyss. On his homeworld, but he was not yet a shade mage. Seeking to understand and use this new power, he, he and use this new power, he made a pact with the shade and all the corruption the abyss has to offer. And Nocto's mission currently is to find a weakness to Soyros, the omnipotent lord of corruption, and to end him. So, Nocto's skills as he has developed them. He's highly trained in bluff, diplomacy, uh, history, intimidate, perception, stealth, streetwise, and thievery, obviously. And this will, th this will uh, make more sense with his background later. He's trained in endurance. He has some resemblance in uh, healing and nature and religion and insight. But because he is corruption-based, he has no points, no training, in acrobatics or athletics. So let's go on to his dominions. His shade vessel is a void ring. And we'll talk more about that later. Uh, he was once a mere scholar of the occult before embracing the void. Uh, his homeland is, of, is Gotham. And Gotham is a place where uh, fighting things that go bump in the night, the vampires, the... Um, Werewolves, ghosts, demons, learning the occult enough to trap and ensnare and be able to work around and know which which herb will mix best with the silver, Where's, where does the wolf's bane grow. All of these things are intrinsic to survival in a place like Gotham. So Nocta was very familiar, and he was... Adept. He was a he was kind of like a vigilante knight, uh, sort of who someone who would investigate, someone who would have to stay one step ahead of the evils that were stronger than the normal inhabitant of Gotham. But through their skill, through their training, through through their own um, ingenuity, they would have to outsmart and uh, be able to repel these evil invaders from from their from their cities from their homes so fighting evil is not something that nocta was unfamiliar with and being able to delve into the occult to fight the occult was not something nocta was unfamiliar with either however it was not until he had to survive the horrors of a yaniv invasion that he went back to this wellspring of corruption of the abyss that he finally just gave in completely and literally throws himself 
into the abyss and saying, I will do whatever it takes to conquer all. And that's what he does. It was then that he made his pact with the Shade and began to explore the depths of fear, horror, and nightmare. Hugo became an avatar of corruption with the bottomless ambition and darkness provided by the Void. Cantrips, again, uh, these are when a Shade Mage uses the Shade to enhance their powers in anything other than a spell. So, Nocto is an occultist in command of shadows and forms of the Abyss. So, Nocto would, for example, use tendrils of shadow that can stretch out to assist him with his physical checks. Um, he can also use shadows to be bent and folded to cover and conceal uh, things regarding uh, stealth, thievery, um, bluff checks when, whenever he's trying to sleight of hand someone. Uh, that would be uh, something that would be appropriate for uh, for Nocto's skill set. And the use of shadows and darkness can be very useful in bluff and intimidation checks. And intimidation is one of Nocto's very strong points um, as we blush him, as we build him out. Spells. <clears throat> First and foremost, we're going to cover the unique spell of Nocto, which is, in essence, the dark ritual. Dark Ritual is a combination of, it, is, it only costs one shade, but it uses aspects of both Ambition and Darkness. And for Ambition, Nocto will sacrifice his own sanity. He will delve into his own mind space. He will take on, a, and, and in the game, this is represented as uh, taking on a stress counter, taking on, some, taking on a, a debuff to provide himself with three corruption chain that he did not have to sip for. He is he is he is sacrificing his sanity for shade. That is how Nocto powers or begins to power most of his spells. That is his secret link to the abyss, is this constant trade-off between his sanity and the shade. So his ambition spells are uh First, we're going to go over with Blood Sacrifice. Blood Sacrifice is a Shade Summon. It's a creature. It's a minion. And it's essentially a bag of blood. That, that's all it is. It's a weak-ass creature. It, you just, it's, a, it's a bag of blood, and you're able to uh, sacrifice this creature for uh, any other um, use that you, would, that you would want. And one of those uh, spells is Call the Weak, uh, where he would just sacrifice a creature and deal damage to everyone else. Uh, no, that's Bone Splinters. I'm sorry. Bone Splinters does that. So he would sacrifice a creature, probably Blood Sacrifice, and what would happen with... Um, let me look it up, actually. Give me one second. I feel stupid. So call the weak. <laughs> so Bone Splinters, you would sacrifice the Blood Bag to automatically deal uh, a wound's worth of damage to all surrounding creatures. That's what uh, Bone Splinters does. Hull the Weak is when you would sacrifice a, sacrifice a creature and you would get four Corruption Shade in, in return. So, again, that whole ambition idea that you're going to sacrifice your minions, sacrifice something dear to you, sacrifice your sanity, uh, that you would get something that you need in return is, it, it is very much in Nocto's uh, domain. The darkness spells are where things get a little more intense. You have spells like Traumatize and Horrify, all of which are spells that will add um, they will add what's called, um, oh my god, why am I spacing the name of it? <laughs> it's this, it's a, the stress, stress counters. See, I can remember, I can do this. These spells add stress counters to the target. And stress counters, for each stress counter on a target, they suffer a minus one penalty to all skill test rolls. This includes combat but they will take a minus one penalty to all skill test rolls. 
as long as they have this stress counter on them. And as long as they have these stress counters, these spells have additional effects. For Traumatize, this target cannot make a full action until the end of its next turn if it has stress counters equal to or greater than its toughness. And that's one of the main mechanics of stress counters. If you have a target and you put as many stress counters on it equal to its toughness, it's completely screwed. It, it's it, other These spells are going to have additional effects that are going to hurt it. Um, Horrify, same deal. It adds a stress counter. But it also works on uh, spellcasters. It stops your spellcasters from being able to recharge their spells and get more shade. So Horrify is something you would cast on other shade mages. And when it has, uh, when they have stress counters equal to or greater than their toughness, that that kicks in. They're going to be horrified. They're going to be un in unable to access the shade. And then we have Feel My Pain, which if they have stress counters greater, greater than their toughness, uh, they will lose a wound. So you're able to, uh, so as long as you stack those stress counters on them, and they and they're just stacking with these stress counters. They're they're bogged down. They're they're being driven through the mire. They're suffering from hallucinations. You are making them see things. They're all of a sudden they see uh, Pennywise the clown from the corner of their eye. Like you, you are you are messing with these people. You are doing horrible things to them. But if it gets too high, you're able to just feel my pain. And instantly take a wound from them because they are so uh, in, in, enthralled by your by your shade magic. And what's also going on is we're going to talk about the shadow symbiote. Now the shadow symbiote is going to be a main aspect of your character because this is a a shade summon that you're able to um, that you're going to be able to to cast. But after you cast it, it's going to be able to exhaust itself and attach itself to you. And it's going to become a, a buff. It's going to become a, um, a, a boon, as it were. And it's going to give you a couple of new abilities. It's going to give you plus one to your power. It's going to make Nocto stronger physically. He's going to be able to do more damage with this Shadow Symbiote attached to him. The Shadow Symbiote's also going to be able to give him initiative, which means he's going to, Nocto's always going to deal damage first in combat. It's basically the first strike mechanic. And also, he's going to have Fright. And Fright is what Traumatize and Horrify do, but in combat form. Every time Nocto is engaged in combat with someone, and they are either alone or um, and, and they're they're basically alone and they're trying to attack him. Either they initiate attack or he attacks them and they're alone. They have to roll an intimidation check against Nocto. And Nocto's gonna and if they fail that check or if Nocto fails, wins the check because Nocto's gonna be rolling his intimidation against their insight. And spoiler alert, he's gonna win. He's a shade mage. He's, this is not some some pissant character. He is a powerful mage. And most normie characters you're going to meet at first level, they're not going to stand a chance. They're going to take the stress counter every time they engage in combat with Nocto. Every time they're in combat with him, they're going to take that stress counter again and again and again. And that's the power of the symbiote. And so one of the things that we're going to do is we're going is this symbiote is going to be a part of Nocto's uh, flavor, as it were. So to his, char to his char character aspects, if the spells weren't enough, um, Shadow Weapon. Nocto infuses his weapons with the powers of Shadow and Fear. All of his attacks are made with his Intimidate skill, as long as his opponent can see the weapon. So as long as the opponent, so as long, so as long as Nocto is frontward facing and he's in full view 
he's intimidating. He's using intimidation as his attack skill. And this is his ability to mess with his opponent's mind. That's the kind of void mage that he is. Hysteria. Nocto believes in sacrifice. Many, many times that means his own creations, as we alluded to earlier. Whenever his spells require him to execute his own summons or minions, or his spells kill another shade summon, he gets to make another spell battery roll, which refreshes his spells. And Shadow Walk. Now, this one has a lot more detail that you're going to have to study on your own, but Nocto has the power to take on the form of, uh, of a shadow. In this form, he cannot attack, nor can he be attacked, uh, but he can still be damaged by magic. But he will have buffs to stealth and speed while he's in this form, and it's very useful to get out of trouble in a pinch, but he has the power to just with a snap of his finger, become one with shadows and just move as freely as he wants in a gaseous form. And for that, he has his shade afflictions. Now, the price of being stained with corruption is that you will have to hide your true self from the innocent and naive masses. You will hide yourself from the light of day and your drive to get the job done will leave a trail of innocent lives in your wake that no amount of money or power could hide. And this is a price with which Nocto is apparently more than willing to pay. Nocto's face and bare skin must avoid direct sunlight at all times. Nocto has become one with shadow. He is a creature of the night. He is no he, he is said adieu to to the light of day. In all in all of its forms across the realms of, uh, uh, as wide as the universe, he cannot in at any time have the sunlight touch his skin, lest the shade consume him for it. Nocto also must not be defeated while in darkness or night. He must rule. He must be supreme. And if he is defeated in darkness or night, uh, he's going to suffer for it. He was not worthy of his gift, as it were. His artifacts. Now, we talked about Nocto's void ring. It also serves as an enchanted artifact, as well as his shade vessel. Uh, while he wears his void ring, he possesses immortality. At the price of a single corruption shade, Nocto is healed by the abyss. His wounds are replaced and whipped, whisked away with black vapor, leaving Nocto's body unharmed. And how this works is, just like regeneration in Magic the Gathering, if you take damage and it's going to destroy you, or it's going to cause you to take a wound. You simply pay that one corruption shade, and you're healed. You're exhausted. You're not able to do anything else. But the damage is removed. You are healed. Next is Nocto's weapon called Sable Tendrils. It is a leather flail powered by darkness. While wielding Sable Tendrils, Nocto's attacks deal plus two damage and he himself gains one toughness. So it makes him more resilient in battle because of his, his shadows. And he also deals two damage. Now, that damage stacks with the damage also granted by the symbiote, which is three damage total. So those, those will stack. And character advancement. As you roleplay as Nocto, you will have a few opportunities to develop this character. Um, the first and obvious is improving the Shadow Symbiote until it can serve as a constant champion the way that Hugo's uh, Shade Summon does. It, it's, it's constantly out. It's always going to be there. Uh, and in, this would take the, the form of a journey. For example, Nocto learned from an obscure tome how to tap into the symbiote of the abyss on Gotham. Maybe if he went to another abyss on another world and, and performed a certain ritual, he might get this, the symbiote from another world and, and gain that library point that way. And um, spoiler alert, you only need to stack a Shade Summon spell three times to make it a, a champion. So, 
at at level three at at the third at the third um the third ritual or two more if you're role playing it he can have that somebody out as a champion um if you wanted to improve him in that way another way you could explore nocto is to uh find more ways and to discuss with uh with your shade master uh ways of turning stress counters into more buffs and boons or increasing your your mind spells uh help your help nocto get get the most and not just the most but get more of those kinds of spells in his in his library so even after he casts one he still has one back that he's available that he's able to tap into and cast again and obviously the third is search all leads involving the Yaniv who attacked Gotham and their connection to Soyros. Because once again, Nocto is on a journey with the Dementors to overthrow the overlord of corruption. Now, even though Nocto is, an, is, a, is of course himself corrupt, Soyros has such a stranglehold over the, sh the, the, the shade of corruption, over the dominion of corruption, that every other corrupt faction is trying to overthrow him. And, of course, Nocto is doomed to fail, but does he have to? And that's going to be a choice you could make as you, uh, as you play this character. You're going to be able to say, if Nocto could win, how is he going to do it? And thank you for joining us. That is our Corruption Shade Mage our pre-gen and it was a pleasure introducing him to all of you and once again uh go out have fun and throw some shade everyone Bye bye